Welcome to this video on clouds and climate change. My name is Hermo Rusenberg. In this module, we will have a deeper look into the role of clouds in the climate system. We have seen before that the energy balance of the Earth is quite complex. Let's have a closer look. This diagram shows the energy flowing in and out of the Earth system. The numbers are given in watts per square meter. The intensity of solar radiation at the top of the atmosphere is approximately 340 watts per square meter. Part of this radiation is reflected into space again by clouds, aerosol and by the surface of the Earth. Solar radiation is also partly absorbed by the atmosphere. The remaining energy enters the surface where it is absorbed and heats the surface of the Earth. How does the Earth respond to this heating? Under equilibrium conditions, the Earth's surface will lose as much energy as it will gain. How does the surface of the Earth lose its heat? There are several mechanisms for this. One, it will radiate thermal infrared radiation. Some absorbed energy will be used to evaporate water, which is then released into the atmosphere. The energy contained by the water vapor molecules is called latent heat. Energy is transported into the atmosphere by conduction. We call this sensible heat. At the top of the atmosphere, the Earth system is in approximate equilibrium. The energy entering the system roughly equals the energy leaving it. If more energy would enter than leave, then the Earth would warm and start to radiate more energy until equilibrium is reached again. Around 340 watts per square meter is entering the Earth. 100 is reflected and 239 is emitted into space as infrared radiation. As we can see, as much energy is leaving the Earth as is entering it, a state of approximate equilibrium. Let's now have a look at the surface of the Earth. In a state of equilibrium, the solar energy entering the surface has to be balanced. But is this the case? Let's get back to the numbers again. The Earth gains 160 watts per square meter. It loses 84 in the form of latent heat and 20 in the form of sensible heat. To restore the energy balance, the surface should only radiate another 47 watts per square meter. It radiates much more, 398. What is going on? Let's have a closer look at the energy balance. To understand the energy balance at the surface, we also have to look at the energy flows in the atmosphere. Clouds, aerosol and gases absorb radiation. The atmosphere gains energy by this absorption. The atmosphere also emits radiation, and the more it absorbs, the more it will emit. Part of this energy is directed towards the surface again. The net inflow of energy at the surface is therefore the summation of solar and atmospheric thermal radiation. We have seen that we can expect some 57 watts per square meter of outgoing infrared radiation to compensate the incoming solar energy. Emission by greenhouse gases, clouds and aerosols add another 340 watts per square meter to this. We have seen that clouds play a significant role in the energy balance of the atmosphere. A good understanding of clouds, their formation and interaction with radiation is therefore important. Let's go to the beginning. It all starts with condensation and evaporation. Water is the only substance in nature that occurs in its three phases, liquid, gas and solid. Clouds are a permanent manifestation of this, as we can see in this movie. The clouds are constantly growing, shrinking, appearing and disappearing. The clouds in the video consist of liquid water droplets, suspended in the air. Turbulent air motions create a permanent flow of water vapor towards the clouds. This water vapor condensates into liquid droplets and becomes visible as a cloud. The turbulence also moves the droplet into drier regions, or brings drier air into the clouds and the droplets evaporate again. This is a continuous process of distribution of energy in the atmosphere. Let's consider liquid water. The molecules in the liquid have some kinetic energy. When that is large enough, molecules at the surface can break free from the neighboring molecules and enter into the free space above the surface. Some vapor is formed. Also, the reverse process is possible. Water vapor molecules close to the surface can enter the liquid and be bound there. It is a two-way process. When a balance is reached between the in and outflow of molecules, we speak of saturation. The corresponding pressure of water vapor is called saturation pressure. Since the kinetic energy of molecules increases with the temperature, also the water vapor saturation pressure increases with temperature. The relation of pressure and temperature was derived by the scientists Rudolf Clausius and Benoit Clapeyron in the 19th century. 
a qualitative representation of the work is given in this graph. The black line shows the saturation pressure as a function of the temperature. Suppose we have an air parcel A with a temperature Ta and water vapor pressure v, Va. The water vapor pressure is still below the saturation line, so no condensation will occur. If we increase the amount of water vapor to Vb and keep the temperature constant, we cross the saturation line and the water vapor condenses into liquid. We can also keep the amount of water vapor constant to Va and lower the temperature to Tc. Also then the condensation line is crossed and condensation occurs. These phase changes are import im extremely important in the climate system. During condensation, the kinetic energy of the molecules is reduced and released into the environment. We speak of the release of latent heat. This warms the environmental air. During evaporation, the reverse occurs. The water vapor molecules gain kinetic energy, which is taken from the environment. This cools the environmental air. If we now go back to the atmospheric energy balance that we discussed before, part of the energy absorbed by the Earth is used for the evaporation of water. The water vapor moves upwards into the atmosphere, condenses into a cloud and releases its energy in the process. Clouds are a major transporter of energy in the atmosphere. In summary, clouds reflect solar radiation back into space. They cool the Earth. Clouds also absorb infrared radiation coming from the surface of the Earth and emit a part of this back again to the surface. They warm the Earth. Cloud formation is a major mechanism for the distribution of energy in the atmosphere. Different clouds can have different effects. For instance, low-level water clouds contain many small droplets. They are effective reflectors of solar radiation and have a cooling effect. High-level ice clouds are more transparent to solar light than to infrared radiation and therefore warm the Earth. In a previous model, we have seen that the clouds on average cool the Earth by some 10 degrees. We have also seen that the cloud formation depends on the temperature. This leads to the logical question, what will clouds do in a warming climate? Will the cooling effect increase, decrease? That will be the topic of the next module of this MOOC. For now, I leave you with the cloud questions you always wanted to ask yourself.